so I want to remind folks that one of the challenges in, in the junior high in particular is that we have both uh, secondary and primary or junior high and elementary students. Our sixth grade students are a different classification than our seventh and eighth grade students. So tonight, as I, as I go through things, I need you to remember uh, that I, I have to get through a lot of different settings before I make it to your particular setting, but I'm, I'm gonna get there as fast as I can. Uh, so what I wanna do is I wanna start with the sixth grade and kind of work my way from there. And I wanna start with on-site. So uh, for parents that are thinking, okay, I wanna send my sixth grade child to school for on-site slash hybrid learning, all right? What, what does that mean? Well, it means when we are able to have everyone on site, all students will attend every single day for sixth grade. That's for our sixth grade students again only. Those students will remain with that one classroom teacher and then they'll be just like any traditional elementary classroom. And then students will still attend an elective class with an elective teacher, all right? Uh, when we are holding classes remotely, let's say something happens, something comes up and we do have to shut down. Those students must log in twice a day from home to check in with their teacher, all right? Once in the morning and once in the afternoon. There must be an a.m. p.m. or morning afternoon. Uh, teachers will provide instruction and directions during the check-ins, and then we're going to ensure uh, their progress in their coursework, make sure they're work working along. Uh, teachers may also use that time to meet with or meet and work with small groups, uh, and attendance will be based on students' daily check-in with those teachers. So they, they must check in with those teachers twice a day in order to satisfy attendance. Uh, students will not, uh, students not able to attend will need to have their absence excused just like you might when you have your child in regular school, okay? Uh, that, that part won't change. Kids still are going to get headaches and stomach aches and just not be able to participate even though they're at home. In those days, just go ahead and call into the office and say, hey, my child's going to be home sick today. Um, they're gonna be home anyway, but they're gonna be home sick now too. Um, so uh, then a, a, as a general note, sixth grade students uh, are not going to be impacted by that AB day schedule, all right? That's not going to impact them. I know there's a lot of chatter about what's happening with AB day schedule in secondary, but that's not going to impact uh, sixth grade. All right, let's talk a little bit about on-site for seventh and eighth grade now, all right? Again, this is just our on-site slash hybrid students. And for those of you wondering, yes, I'm trying to get all this information typed up too. I have some notes and I'm trying as I've worked through it today, but once I have all this stuff typed up and cleaned up and <laughs> all of my spelling errors corrected, I will try to get that out to all of our parents as quick as possible. So on-site or hybrid for seventh and eighth grade. When we're able to have students here, we'll be on that AB schedule. If you have not heard, the AB schedule is going to be split alphabetically A through L, all right, last names A through L will be A days. Last names M through Z will be on B days. Uh, my notes here. All right, so on your day of attendance, your student will come to school. So if your last name is Abrams, you'll be here on an A day and you will go to all of your regular classes. Uh, and then on B day, when you do not report to school, you will have work that your teachers have assigned to you the day prior to keep you engaged throughout that day. All right, that is on our teachers to make sure that we're keeping track of what the students are engaging with and how they're making their way through their curriculum. All right, so when we have those students, um, let me double check. All right, when we have our students holding those classes remotely, okay, you signed up to be on site, but something happens and we have to close down and kids have to go home to learn from home. All right, in those situations, students will be expected to log into their classes each period from home. All right, so you log into your first period class, second period class, and so on through the rest of the school day. Those teachers will have lessons prepared for the students when they log in. That lesson may only be five, 10, 15 minutes to say, hey, here's what we need. These are the directions. This is the idea of what we're working on, or maybe we're catching up with the information that we had covered the day prior. Uh, but anywhere from five to 15 minutes, they'll be working with those students, and then they'll say, okay, now it's time to, to set loose and, and get to work on your own at home. All right, that will be the expectation for those students. Uh, let me double check, make sure I'm not missing anything on that. All right, those teachers are ensuring their minutes are being met. All right, uh, that's going to be important. The minutes piece as we start transitioning to remote stuff, uh, that'll, that'll make more sense. All right, but teachers will be keeping track of our students' progress in the way. Um, all right. Okay, regardless if your child is an A or B day student, uh, they will be able to get lunch. 
All right, we are working out the details of how that's going to look for our students who are not allowed to be uh, on site because of numbers. Uh, I need to meet with our, our food service director and discuss that with her. I would anticipate, again, big asterisk in all these in these town halls because things change so quickly. Uh, I would anticipate that will be a, a box lunch to go lunch for our students that are not scheduled to be in session on those days. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm just anticipating that. All right, let's talk a little bit about what it means to be a remote student. All right, I'm going to kind of go through uh, first what teachers we have in place to remote students. All right, we will have one primary remote teacher. All right, one primary remote learning teacher is our official title. That is Mrs. Voth. Uh, we will also have one uh, core subject teacher that is a remote teacher. All right, for uh, math, that's Mrs. Cooper. For science, it's Mr. McClure. For uh, English, it's Mr. Bailey. And for social studies, it's Mr. Schneider. All right. And then we also have a remote learning success coordinator. All right. Uh, so let me kind of explain what, what a day might look like for a student. Okay. And then that will help understand how all those different teachers roles make sense. So if I'm a student and I'm a remote and I'm, I'm getting ready for my school day, uh, I have a choice. I could go first period and I could check in with Mr. McClure for science, for help in science, because I'm having a hard time in the digital curriculum in Excellus for, for science. And that might be my, my one time that day, I'd log in and I have a meaningful connection with the teacher. And we go through that work in Excellus and I finally understand that concept in science that I'm struggling with. That might be your, your option for that day. All right, second period. Second period, Mr. Bailey will be available to do the same thing for students in grades six through eight who are struggling with English. And then third period, uh, we will have Mr. Schneider available for help with social studies. And then lastly, Mrs. Cooper will be available fourth period for math. Also, if a student says, you know what, I'm really not struggling in any of those classes. Uh, I, I really don't need help in any of those four. Well, then the expectation that you check in with the remote learning lead teacher, Mrs. Voth, and she will have a meaningful lesson for that child for that day. Uh, she will be offering this at times. Uh, we're, we're working out those details uh, on the exact times, but it will likely be during second and third period. I am not going to share specific times with you just yet as far as, uh, because there might be three different groups that we have scheduled within those two class periods. That model is going to look a little bit different, but we'll be getting the times out to parents as we learn more about that. But what we've done is we've tried to structure that so those teachers all have that opportunity to have that contact with students before we ever get all the way through our day. Now we're halfway through our day and that's where our student success coordinator comes in. That's where Mrs. Swartz comes in, all right? Mrs. Swartz will then at the end of the day look at the attendance logs the teachers have been keeping and they will check that every she will check that every single student that has checked in as a remote student has actually checked in with a teacher at some point that day, either with one of those four core teachers or sitting with Miss Voth for one of her lessons in her class. All right. So uh, that's that's what it might start to look like is, is if you're a student. Um, so if you're having trouble in any one of those uh, four main core subject areas, students can absolutely sit down with Mrs. Voth and she'll help them out as much as she possibly can. But we all know by the time you get into some of the eighth grade math, sometimes you, sometimes you clearly are going to need that person that's trained in that curriculum. Um, all right, so that's that's how that might look. Let me double check my notes, make sure I didn't miss anything on that. All right. Uh, lastly, if that, okay, as Mrs. Schwartz does find that a student did not check in that day with any teacher, what she will do is then she will then follow up with parents and say, hey, did you know that your child did not log in today? Some parents may be going to work and they have no idea that their kid blew off school that day for, you know, uh, for that day or maybe the day prior. So Mrs. Schwartz is going, to be, is going to be calling every single day saying, your child did not log in today. Uh, and maybe you say, oh, I forgot they're, they're sick and they're not able to work. Fine, no problem. We'll get it marked down. Um, so that's, that's where, where we're headed with Ms. Ward's role. Uh, all right, uh, let's talk a little bit about tracking progress. Uh, our technology department, uh, Dr. Hare, is going to be providing a training session for parents, an informational session for parents, I should say, where you can get information about how Excellus works and how you can monitor your child's progress in the program, all right? Uh, the question was raised if children or students will be allowed to work ahead in Excellus, they will be. Uh, keep in mind that if you, if you race off and finish everything, uh, say, wow, my kid just blew through the whole entire semester and it's only, you know, the end of the first quarter. There's still an expectation that every single day that you have that meaningful contact 
with a teacher. So that student, even though they may be finished with the Excel work, will still need to log in and at least attend the class with Mrs. Both on a daily basis in order to satisfy attendance requirements. Um, so another uh, on, the, on the tracking, Mrs. Both will help with that. However, uh, students are going to be expected to monitor or to log 360 minutes of academic activities each day. Uh, that could be a combination of Excellus and it could be a combination of other non-screen time activities. Maybe they check in with one of the uh, one of the four core subject area teachers and they say, hey, there's this other activity. You put your computer aside for a while and I want you to give this a shot another way. Uh, and it's just an old fashioned pencil and paper. That might happen. And that would totally count for the 360 minutes. The, the difference here though is that to account for those minutes, parents are going to be responsible for signing off for them. So a parent will be responsible for saying, yes, my child did all 360 minutes worth of learning this week. Uh, that is the major difference between uh, the remote learner and then when the on-site learner has to go home because of a shutdown. When we shut down and they go home, our teachers monitor that. When uh, the remote learners are at home, the, the expectation is that a parent is going to sign off on those 360 minutes. That said, uh, we're anticipating that the state is going to be providing a digital log for us to use for parents to log those minutes. That's been the, the quote unquote rumor for a little bit. If that does not happen, we will be providing that ourselves. But I anticipate that if we don't get that from the state, uh, that our educational service provider for this region, uh, Greenbush, will be helping us uh, provide that so that we have a uniform thing for our, our region of, uh, of Kansas. Okay, uh, let's talk a little bit more about uh, about remote learners, because as you know, remote learners have been given the option to come in for uh, co-curricular. In our junior high, that means band and choir. So if you're coming in band or choir and you're a remote learner, you will still have to adhere to the A-B day schedule because that would mess up our cohorts if we didn't have students maintaining that, all right? So uh, please, please keep that in mind. If your last name is A through L and you're remote learning, and you want to come to band or choir, you may only attend on those days that your last name corresponds with, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, there are some other things in there as well. Um, if, if you're dropping your child off for band or choir, uh, the expectation is you don't drop them off more than five minutes before that class period starts and that they're picked up within five minutes after that class period starts. If we have a lot of just missed classes, unexcused absences from it, parents aren't checking in with us, uh, or if we're, we're having problems getting children picked up, we're going to probably have a, a three strikes policy where after three times of having the issue, we say, okay, I'm sorry, this, for whatever reason, it's not working out well for that child to be in that, in that program. We'll work with folks. We really will. And again, if you have uh, excused absences, that's absolutely fine. We're going to work with you guys for that. Okay. At this point, uh, that is all the, the big stuff that I'm trying to share uh, with you that, that has happened. Actually, I have a sticky note with late additions that I forgot about. A uh, couple things. Students don't have Chromebook fees this year. The expectation if they are on site or slash hybrid is that they're taking that device home. Even students who checked them in in the past uh, that you know, it wasn't a big deal, they had a device at home or something, the expectation is still going to be that you take the device home simply because of the whole back and forth piece. All right, the checking them in and out and having multiple hands on them for that process. Students, all students will need to take their devices home this year. Uh, you heard that uh, lockers are out. That means that your child needs to have a good backpack. Uh, we've been talking about in your classroom spaces with teachers, how are you going to accommodate your students when they come in and sit down that backpack because they're going to need that extra space. Uh, we had to close off our water fountains. They had to, they had to put bags over them, um, but we were allowed to keep our bottle fillers. So uh, we have two water bottle fillers in our building. Please send your child to school with a water bottle this year. All right, because we will not be able to just send them down to get a drink. Uh, oh, sixth grade parents. Uh, I, Mrs. Eirich got a hold of me just before the meeting. Sixth grade parents, you can find out who your teacher is going to be. You can log into PowerSchool as soon as you're able, and you can look at your second period teacher. That will be your child's teacher for their in class, uh, for their <laughs> elementary style classroom. I'm still trying to figure out how to wrap my head around that. I've been a secondary principal all this time. So, uh, I think those are all my last little notes. What I want to do now is I want to share a link with you all in the chat box. All right. So if you look in that chat box, you will see uh, there is a link to all the questions that were submitted to me uh, between now and the last town hall. They all have answers next to them. Uh, this time I went ahead and typed them out instead of referring people back to the YouTube video that we posted. I know that can be a little tedious. So I did ask to try to type that stuff out for everyone. 
uh, you guys are all adults, so I'm going to allow you to read that on your own instead of just standing here and reading a list aloud to you all because I know how annoying that can be. Um, but for the most part, uh, I think I have hit all of those questions that are in that, in that document as I've gone through things today. Uh, I want to make sure, though, that if, if I've missed anything that was in, in that list of questions there, uh, that, that you please put it in the chat box and, and let us know, uh, because that's pretty much everything I have to present at this time. Um, the, the, I guess the very first question in there is one that, that is a, a question we did not discuss today, which is when will the teachers be contacting them? First day of school. Uh, Excellus will not be opened up to students before the first day of school because they may be starting school before the first day of school. So that will be opened up at that point in time. And I'm, I'm, I keep checking our chat box and I'm not seeing anybody put anything into the chat box. If, if you have questions, by all means, please go ahead and do that. Uh, just go ahead and, and type them in there. And if you wanna send it to me privately, that would be fine. Uh, how do we make schedule changes? If you have a request for a schedule change, you can email me. Uh, I will tell you that schedule changes are nearly impossible. Uh, we have rebuilt our schedule three times in the last few days, uh, last week and a half. So uh, getting to where we are now is no small feat. Uh, thanks, Mrs. Eirich. She's been a huge uh, step in that process. But uh, what, what is in Power School now is, is, is should be accurate. If you have questions about what's in Power School with the schedule, let us know. But I, I see another private message to me is, is are the kids' schedules out? Yep, what we have in Power School should be accurate. If you're seeing things that concern me, email me. Uh, again, it's very difficult to, to make changes at this point in time. Um, are the schedules listed in Power School final? So pretty, pretty close, yes. Uh, it, it really is difficult. Normally we try to be as flexible as we can and go this way or that way, wherever we need to for parents. Uh, with, with the A-B day schedule and, and all of that, and with trying to keep our sixth grade coded so that still the students going to a band class, really locked our teachers certain roles with certain students that had some activities that they're involved with. Um, that's something that we've tried really hard to think about is how is, uh, how, how is our structure in the building impacting our cohorts outside of our building with other activities they may be doing? There's going to be some mixing on the school buses and things of that nature that really make things challenging. So when, when parents ask us, hey, can you change my kiddo to this class? I, I know the, the request is often coming from a really good place, but uh, it, it'd be really difficult to get those, those answers that we, we know parents may want to have. Uh, okay, let me keep going through the questions here. Do Excel students have to follow the USD 340 schedule? Uh, can we school on a weekend? Yeah, Here, here's the deal. Again, you, uh, as I was saying earlier, you, you must have your child check in every day through that remote learning program for meaningful contact. So if you want to do something on the weekend, that's fine. You can say, okay, my 360 minutes, we got it in this week. We're safe, okay? If you did so on Saturday or Sunday and you got it in for the week, uh, that, that's fine. All right, um, that's, that's not a problem, but you will, again, if you blow through all your school, I, I, I was a high school principal for a while where I had some really gifted uh, students working on online programs and, and working full-time jobs at the same time, and they were really dedicated to pushing through their schoolwork and time in a, in, a, in a fast way, and they did it. They could finish a whole entire semester very, very early sometimes. If your child does that, there will still be that expectation that your child is checking in with a teacher every single day for meaningful contact, even though they may have finished that Excellus coursework. All right, uh, let me check our chat box here. Do any teachers have Amazon wish list? Oh, that is so sweet, you guys. Uh, I'm sure we do have some teachers that have Amazon wish list. If, if you would like me to put something out like that, I would be happy to uh, get that out to, to folks. Uh, that looks like that one was sent to me privately. Uh, immunizations, how do we submit those? You can call our office in the mornings. Right now is when my secretaries are working between 8 and 11. Uh, we had to cut back their hours a little bit so they're not here in the afternoons. So if you need to call and talk to someone, please call in between 8 and 11, and we can get you squared away with immunizations and all those things that we get to go through. We still get to do all that stuff even in a pandemic. Uh, all right, are the schedules listed for remote learning? No, uh, you, the remote learning piece, again, with Ellis will not be opened up until the day of for students. That's when they're going to see what, what is all in there, all right? Uh, okay, all right. I am not seeing any more questions in the chat box. Oh, you guys are welcome, absolutely. Um, I appreciate all the comments in there. Anything, I wanna give everyone a few more moments here before we say goodbye. It was a quick session tonight, which is okay because they turned the air conditioning off in the building. So it's getting warm in here. Um, 
Oh, choir. Okay. Is course still required? No, we're not going to require it fall semester. All right. Uh, that'll, that'll be um, transition. What our choir class is becoming is, uh, well, what, let me back up a little bit. Uh, the, we have a new choir teacher this year, Rachel Notting. Um, so she is new on this role. Previously, we, with the former choir teacher, Mrs. Buffy, we had been transitioning our sixth grade choir into like a music foundations class uh, out of the understanding that we needed to open that scope up a little bit more than just be vocal. So students will still be having an opportunity to be musical this year, uh, even though it may not just be choir, it's going to look different. Okay, I hope, I hope that gets what, what was being asked, Shelley. Um, all right, uh, will we be contacting parents about remote learning electives? Uh, well, uh, yes, well, I can tell you right now that uh, we will have seventh grade electives are going to be uh, the, the PE, or I'm sorry, the health class that is required for seventh grade that is available in Excellus for remote learners. Uh, and then for eighth grade, they have a model of career and life planning that is required for eighth graders. So we will have our students take those classes there. If they would like to take an additional uh, an elective through Excellus, there's room for them to take one additional elective. However, that, that puts them at five, which is all that's required. So uh, they can take the five that we're requiring, or they can take six and, and choose from another one of the electives. Uh, I need to work with Dr. Hare still to find out which of those other electives we may, able, may be able to offer. I wish I had a list of those to share with you today, but that hasn't quite happened yet. Uh, still, still working through some of the Excel stuff with Dr. Hare. Uh, let me see what else we have. Okay, we signed up to do remote and band, but have decided not to do band. If you've if, yeah, any changes on that, just email me. That's fine. I do not mind. That's why I am here. Uh, I try my hardest to get back to everybody as quick as I can. Sometimes it takes me a little while because I'm searching for an answer, but if I know the answer, I try to get back to you as fast as I can. So if you need to change something like band required, just shoot me an email and we'll get you taken care of. Not a problem. Anything else? I will share that piece on the Amazon wish list. Thank you so much, you guys. Okay, well, hopefully I have all this stuff typed up in a neat little way for you guys at some point. I can send all this out to parents. Uh, I do wanna make sure I have all my, my ducks in a row before I send anything out and make it too public, but I'm glad you guys were able to make it. We had 25 parents log in tonight and join us. So thank you, I'm glad you were here. And I think that does it for us. I'm gonna check our chat box one more time. Okay, is the in-person for remote students available for sixth grade as well? Yes, uh, I tell you what, Kelsey, if you want to go back to the beginning of this, I, I covered all that at the very beginning of the video. Uh, but yes, you can, remote is an option for sixth grade. If sixth graders want to do remote, that is absolutely an option for that. As I was going through those expectations earlier, that was for grades six through eight for remote. Uh, that expectation that they're checking in for that meaningful contact once per day. Right. Uh, is the in-person choir for remote students available for sixth grade as well? Yes. If they if they are wanting to do remote but still come to choir, they may do so. Yes. And that, but that will need to follow the AB day schedule. Don't forget, you still have to follow the AB day schedule according to your child's last name. Uh, let's see. I don't see anything else. Oh. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. All right, well, I think that's going to do it, everybody. If you didn't get a chance to pop, pop your question into the chat box, feel free to send me an email. I'm happy to help you however I can, all right? Thanks, everybody, and have a great day.